Euzu billahi mineşşeytanirracim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi rabbil alamin. Ve salatu ve selamu ala seyyidina Muhammedin ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecmaîn. Allahumme allimna ma yanfa'una ve anfa'ana bima 'allamtana ve zidna ilmen nafi'a. Allahumme arinal hakka hakkan ve arzukna ittiba'a. Ve arinal batıla batılan ve arzukna ictinabe. Rabbi şrah li sadri ve yassir li amri. Ve ahlul uqudatan min lisani yafqahu qavli. Assalamu alaikum ve rahmetullahi ve berekatuh. Welcome to the Reflections on the Risale-i Nur by Bedeuzzaman Said Nursi podcast series. This is Mustafa Tuna. You can listen to the episodes of this series wherever you listen to your podcasts or at the website www.reflections-rn.org. Today, inshallah, we will continue reading the 13th word. We are uh, at the, the last section of this treatise. As you may remember, or for those uh, who have been following the podcast, as they may remember, the 13th word is a comparison of the wisdoms of the Quran and philosophies, worldviews, isms, ideologies that are not guided or that have not been guided by revelation. And it is about the superiority of the revelation, the Quran as the last and most perfect um, manifestation of revelation in human history in the uh, in, in the risale in the messengership of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the first part of this treatise ustad nursi explained uh, why the quran is superior, superior to other forms of um, other ways of thinking and ideologies and worldviews and philosophies etc and then he started to give us examples of what that means in practical uh, life and there were several examples here and they are uh, all of all of them are from his later teachings when there was a you know, lesson that he had offered and he thought that this would fit into this context he would put it here we read about uh, youth and how one should uh, you know perceive one's youth and spend it what the quran says what other philosophies say uh, about imprisonment how one can deal with a situation like that um, so on and so forth and today inshallah we are going to read the last example of the the superiority of the quran a superiority of a quranic perspective and also how we can read the creation the created beings the substances objects uh, in 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 the cosmos in in the uh, observable universe as signs of creation this is what we will read is a very beautiful example of that too as a reminder a rough translation of the text we will be uh, studying reflecting upon is going to be posted at the website of at the website that is associated with this podcast and once again the the address of that website is www.reflections-rn.org so bismillah let's uh, start reading inshallah huwa <coughs> nuktesi the subtle point of huwa huwa is uh, the word that corresponds to he in arabic he or it what does that mean let's see bismihi subhanahu wa in min shay'in illa yusabbihu bihamdi assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh in his name glory be to him and there is nothing that does not glorify him with praise peace and god's mercy and blessings be upon you continually to 
eternity. So when we read this, we understand that this is a letter that Ustad Nursi is writing to his uh, students once again. Çok aziz ve sıddık kardeşlerim, my very dear and voracious brothers. Kardeşlerim, قُلْ هُوَ اللّٰهُ ve la ilaha illahu daki huwa lafzında or i should have read it in the other uh, in, in 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 a different order uh, it doesn't really matter but we should be loyal to the original text so let me read it again kardeşlerim la ilaha illahu ve kul huvallahu daki huwa lafzında yalnız maddi cihette bir seyahat ve hayaliye i fikriyede hava sahifesinin mütealasıyla Ani bir surette görünen bir zarif nükte-i tevhidde, meslek imaniyenin hadsiz derece kolay ve vücub derecesinde suhuletli bulunmasını ve şirk ve dalaletin mesleğinde hadsiz derecede müşkilatlı, mümteni, binler muhal bulunduğunu müşahede ettim. Gayet kısa bir işaretle o geniş ve uzun nükteyi beyan edeceğim. My very dear and voracious brothers. My brothers. During a journey of imagination and contemplation so this is this is an indication a subtle indication and a beautiful one that uh, that gives us some some uh, entryway into Ustad Nursi's thinking and um, path contemplation right? he says during a journey of imagination and contemplation he is said to have for instance um being wondering going out in barla in that village where he was exiled in the 19 late 1920s and 1930s going out to the mountains uh, to the woods and spending hours sometimes he would go to the mountains and spend days months observing the creation observing the nature observing trees mountains birds sky the sky uh, at some point a scholar was asked like why 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 are the writings of uh, Zaman Said Nursi so effective and yours are not and his his response is really illuminating he says my brother we study texts we study the Quran we study hadith we study the writing of other scholars before us we learn something from them and then we uh, you know narrate them in our writings in our lessons Bedi Zaman studies the cosmos. He studies the creation. He he looks directly to the signs themselves and then he reads them and then he narrates from them. So he would Stad Nursi would have these journeys of imagination and contemplation frequently, and we should do do that too. We we should try to connect to the reality that is out there. That reality is not just a burden. It is not just, you know, the the deni dunya, the lowly dunya. It is lowly. It is deni. It is dunya. It is the lowly thing. Yes, that is correct. If, if we think of it, if we take it for its, you know, substantive existence only. Sad Nursi calls this the manai ismi, the nominative. Uh, meaning the meaning that points to the thing itself alone and nothing else but then there's an indicative meaning that all these object substances have and that is the indicative meaning that is the meaning that indicates something else other indicative meaning that indicates something else other than themselves that indicates their creator so as signs of creation they are precious and beautiful and valuable and perfect and useful beneficial they take us to uh, spiritual states and contemplative states where we learn about where we where we develop an understanding and recognition of the names attributes of our lord and that is the beginning of the path to to ma'rifatullah to knowledge of god so my brothers 
during a journey of imagination and contemplation while examining the page of the air the page of the air now remember this cosmos is the great book of the cosmos it's a great book and in that great book there are pages every book has pages you turn them over each, each page has a different text right so in this in this particular journey of imagination and contemplation Ustad Nursi stops by the page of the air so what is the page of the air the atmosphere the, the gases that are in the atmosphere uh, you know 70 something 78 percent nitrogen uh, in 20 something percent uh, oxygen a little bit of carbon a little bit of water va vapor you know other gases basically this combination of cocktail of gases that is what we call air right and before we move on we should remember uh, what we had been talking about in the past uh, couple of or, or maybe three episodes where we read about these high school students that came to Ustad Nursi and asked him told him uh, our teachers do not talk about the our creator they they don't mention our creator they don't teach us about our lord uh, you know give us some some uh, advice how do we learn about our lord and Ustad Nursi says well if your teachers are not talking about the creator the sciences that they are they are teaching to you are talking about the creator all the time listen to those sciences and then he moves on to uh, give some examples of how you know each of these sciences help us increase our knowledge and awe and love of our lord right so this is the proper way to use science and this is what we will be reading is another example of that uh, even in more particular specific uh, uh, practical application page of the air this cocktail of gases what do we see what does Ustad Nursi see there right during a journey of imagination and contemplation while examining the page of the air from its material point of view alone while examining the page of the air from its material point of view alone an elegant subtle point of monotheism appeared suddenly now every, everybody stop for a moment before we read further or if you are following from the text on the web page before you read uh, further think about this how does air point to monotheism if you are having difficulty figuring out if you are having difficulty coming up with a straightforward answer then listen uh, with, with an open mind and see how contemplation can be exercised how contemplation can lead us to a knowledge of our Lord how deep it can go and and take it as an example that will teach us that teaches us uh, you know how to do this thing how to how to contemplate it is important Ustad Nursi gives us a lot of examples of this uh, and his, his Mathnavi especially is full of these examples um, but it is not enough to read them and be amazed it we, we also need to develop the skill of being able to look out out at the world and seeing the signs of creation ourselves this is an exercise in learning to read the great book of the cosmos as the compilation of the signs of creation an elegant subtle point of monotheism appeared suddenly and i witnessed in the utterance of huwa huwa in la ilaha illa hu so la ilaha illa hu because of the way we read we end saying la ilaha illa hu but the word who is actually actually huwa right there is no god other than he huwa so he was contemplating and then he says la ilaha hu now try to say it yourself the letter ha um 
is the letter that comes from that that is the deepest um the uh, phoneme in the arabic la language it comes from deep close really close to the lungs uh, there's nothing left between the lungs and the uh, and the you know vocal cords etc it is oh, right the air is flowing the air is flowing out from the lungs right so he was saying la ilaha illallah oh. and then he his his mind his imagination and intellect goes to this and starts to think about it right i witnessed in the utterance of huwa in la ilaha illah hu there is no god other than he that is huwa and qul huwallahu qul huwa right qul huwallahu say he that is huwa is god that he he witnessed in the utterance of these that our path of faith is boundlessly easy and the path of misguidance and ascribing partners to god is boundlessly problematic filled with thousands of prohibitively inconceivable assumptions people are making those assumptions all the time every day everywhere but they are they are prohibitively inconceivable their assumptions that people are making there's no grounds to make them how so we will see I am going to expound that long subtle point by pointing to it in a fairly short way so now when, when we see this we should also remember in most cases these are meanings that come to his heart and he he thinks about it but then while articulating uh, you know, whatever is left uh, from what came is articulated that's probably why at the very end of his life Ustad Nursi gathered around himself a few uh, you know, very close uh, students and he taught them from Mathnavi Nuri and Isha'aratul Ijaz his uh, you know books and also Lema'at his books written in Arabic and these were books he had written during his spiritual search in the 19 teens um, and oftentimes a meaning would come to his heart and just to capture it he would take these notes to self especially Mathnavi Nuri the treatises in the Mathnavi Nuri are are these uh, you know notes to self and therefore sometimes they are cryptic there sometimes they they are not you know very elaborate and you know open um, so we really see that how that works in 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 uh, that book uh, elsewhere in the rest of the uh, books of the risale in nur they are usually much more elaborate but even then we need to understand that there is more to it this is not just an intellectual exercise this is a meaning that came to his heart that something that he realized in in the metaphysical spiritual world it is the manifestation of a spiritual state and there is enormous benefit in it yet we too need to aspire to coming close to that spiritual state maybe we cannot maybe we cannot go as far as we start noticing went but that doesn't mean that we have no share of it we need to try we need to you know we, we need to be real about this this is not just an intellectual exercise this is us trying to trying to learn about our creator about our lord and that is the point of being here that is the spice of that is the salt and pepper of life that is the life of life that is what gives meaning to our lives we really need to be real about it we really need to try and think seriously about this we really need, need to not listen to this as if we are listening to a radio show if you, i mean i'm talking of course now talking about the podcast right we, we we really need not listen to this as as if we are listening to a radio show we start notice he says to his students and don't read the recital you know as if you are reading a newspaper 
you know something that sounds interesting you read and you know two days later if they ask you about it you you will not even remember just to uh, i mean even if you are taking it more seriously you know you read just to acquire some information some data no it needs to have a transformative effect on your mind on your heart on your conscience on your intellect and that can only happen if you intend it i mean god is merciful he can you know send a you know spiritual spiritual breeze in your direction and then put that in your heart even without you knowing and intending it right but but if you want to be real about it you need to make an effort you need to intend it evet Nasıl ki bir avuç toprak yüzer çiçeklere nöbetle saksılık eden kabında eğer tabiata, esbaba havale edilse lazım gelir ki ya o kapta küçük mikyasta yüzer belki çiçekler adedince manevi makineler, fabrikalar bulunsun veyahut o parçacık toprakta, topraktaki her bir zerre bütün o ayrı ayrı çiçekleri muhtelif hasiyetleriyle ve hayatlar cihazatıyla yapmalarını bilsin. Adeta bir ilah gibi hadsiz ilmi ve nihayetsiz iktidarı bulunsun. So let's uh, try to read this first and then we move on to the next sentence. This is a an example, a, a relatively more concrete example that Ustad Nursi is giving to us so that we can understand what is to come after that better. This is in a sense his representation, his mithal in uh, in this little uh, relatively short lesson if a handful of soil that hosts hundreds of flowers that take turns in its pot right, so th- th- think of a pot uh, and and you know plant flowers in it over say 10 years many flowers you can grow many flowers in that same soil again and again and again and again if a handful of soil that hosts hundreds of flowers that take turns in its pot is attributed to the nature and causes so that's what people did they said yeah that's natural it's just happening what is nature they uh, without thinking about it unconsciously unconsciously they attributed agency to this thing that they called nature but if you tell me if you ask me you know where is nature what is nature where is it how can you, you know, hold it, grab it, grasp it? It doesn't exist. It is just a name that is given to a combination of things. Those two do not have a substance in and of themselves because those are the causes as we observe them in the universe. And, and they are not things that we can touch and hold as Imam, as in the example that Imam Ghazali gives and later on David Hume used if you see a flame of fire and a piece of cotton and if if the flame of fire comes and touches the cotton and then you take the fire away and the cotton is still burning you assume that the, the flame of fire burned the cotton but you do not see the flame burning the cotton you do not see the causality itself while the cotton is now burning the, the flame is away right uh, this this thing that is called causality is not something that we can hold and touch and attribute substance to it doesn't have substance it is a name that we are giving to an observation so nature or causes if it is attributed to these um, non-existent things, these things that are cognitive realities, not real, not substantive realities, but cognitive realities, right? If we attributed the uh, you know, the flowers that are or, or if you attribute the power of the handful of soil to be the host for hundreds of flowers to nature and causes this will require the existence of hundreds or in fact to the number of the flowers of small-scale metaphysical machines and factories in that pot 
right? They, they, there has to be something in the pot that knows the needs of each and every different species of flower or individual flower that knows the uh, how to manipulate each and every flower, how to manipulate that little seed that fell into the soil and then, you know, crack it, etc. How so? Is there a metaphysical machine or a factory in the pot that does this and that has the knowledge and the will to do it? No. Or all the particle particles in that small amount of soil will have to know how to make each of those discrete flowers, different flowers, with their varying qualities and lifeful equipment. They will have to have boundless knowledge and infinite power, almost like a deity. The word you know that's used here for a deity in uh, in Turkish is ilah. Right, the ilah that's in la ilaha illallah. There is no God when we write it with a capital G. There is no God. Right, there is no creator. There is no provider. There is no sustainer. There is no answer of prayers. There is no God other than God, other than Allah. Right, there is no God other than Allah. But it is as if we will have to assume that there is some power that's that there's a godlike power in that that pot of soil that is doing all this work as if it knows the particular needs and qualities and properties of each and every flower that is that is it is hosting because people did not understand this reality the reality that we will be talking about they went out of their way they they strayed away and they ended up with various forms of pantheism attributing that force that power that intentionality that will that volition to what they called nature the soil right if you know, the more primitive ones also thought in different you know different thought of different gods like there was a soil god a sky god a rain god a river god a sea god because they did not understand the reality that we will be talking about now remember sadness he said that he saw a uh, you know beautiful subtle indication of monotheism in the uh, phoneme huwa right in that uh, easily flowing air that's what we are talking about so this was the um this was the representation that he offered this was the mithal uh, the, the example that he offered we should try to think about it a little bit try to understand it how is it happening that a handful of soil in a pot taking different seeds in turns and being the host for each and every one of them how is it working together how can the soil that is the same substance there may there may be very slight changes in it because soil is a living you know substance there are microbes etc there may be very small changes in it but at the end of the day it, it is a range of things that can be there and it is working in harmony with each and every seed that comes to it if you can't imagine this in a pot imagine the world itself because you can also think of the world the face of the the earth as a pot too for millions and millions of years millions maybe billions of years the 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 soil that is on the surface of the earth has been the host for all sorts of different plants and it is continuing to host them millions of different species of flowers and trees and then uh, you know microbes bacteria uh, fungus mushrooms moss lichen all sorts of things that the soil is hosting the same soil the same range of material that's in the soil is hosting when a person gets sick they, they the person goes to the hospital and then you see in the hospital like these all sorts of different uh, specialties 
right? Internalist and uh, urologist and optometrist and uh, radiologist and cardiologist. Dozens of different special fields of specializ specialization in the hospital. And the, you know, the patient goes and they ask, so what do you have? He says, well, I'm having some I don't know, flutter in my heart. My heart it doesn't feel good. So they send this person to the cardiologist. If they sent the person to the urologist, the urologist would not know what to do. Now, imagine millions of different seeds being thrown into the on the surface of the earth into soil. Millions of different species of seeds, and then individuals among them, and this, the the same soil knows what to do with each and every one of them. Now, of course, we are talking metaphorically here. The soil not, knows nothing. The soil does not have knowledge. The soil does not have uh, ability to sense. The soil does not have power. The soil does not have intentionality. The soil does not have volition. The soil has nothing. But while you know that the soil has nothing, you also observe that as if the soil knows each and every one of them, it works with them in harmony it works with each and every one of them in harmony and it it becomes the host for each different flower and lets it enables it flourish how is that happening how is that happening right so you you say okay there is a power behind this there is a will that is acting behind this there is a knowledge that is behind us that it, it is not in the soil la ilaha right there is no god there is no god in the soil it's, it's not in the soil it is not the soil illa allah there is something beyond it illa allah so if you understood this example from this ustad nursi is going to move on to his uh, study of the air and this is partly because he had realized this uh, beautiful amazing uh, reality about soil earlier on earlier on in his life it is in in his earlier writings right so he already had a cognitive pattern established in his mind to study a phenomenon like this we too should have that we too should develop that cognitive uh, pattern in our thinking inshallah so we saw this example let's move on what is it going to lead us to? Aynen öyle de. Emr ve iradenin bir arşı olan havanın. Rüzgarın her bir parçası ve bir nefes ve tırnak kadar olan huve lafzındaki havada, küçücük mıkyasta, bütün dünyada mevcut telefonların, telgrafların, radyoların ve hadsiz muhtelif konuşmaların merkezleri, santralları, ahize ve nakileleri bulunsun ve o hadsiz işleri beraber ve bir anda yapabilsin veyahut o huvedeki havanın belki unsuru havanın her bir parçasının, her bir zerresi, bütün telefoncular ve ayrı ayrı umum telgrafçılar ve radyo ile konuşanlar kadar manevi şahsiyetleri ve kabiliyetleri bulunsun ve onların umum dillerini bilsin ve aynı zamanda başka zerrelere de bildirsin, neşretsin. Çünkü bil fiil o vaziyet kısmen görünüyor ve havanın bütün eczasında o kabiliyet var. So in the same way, in each part of the air, which is a throne of divine command and will, so air, as that notice is saying, is a throne of divine command and will. So what is throne? We know the divine uh, throne, right? The, uh, the arsh. And we know that we do not know the real nature of it, the quiddity of it. We do not ex know exactly what it is, right? But one thing that we know is that it is a locus of the manifestation of God's beautiful names and attributes and his majesty and perfection right so the air status is then saying a locus of manifestation for God's will and power command divine command and will rather in the same way in each part of the air which is a throne of divine command and will of the wind 
and of the air of the utterance of huwa right the, this word huwa the wind and the utterance of this word huwa which is as big as a single breath and a piece of nail right so the, the if you think of the amount of air that is being moved by by saying this word especially if you are doing it in a, in a silent dhikr right la ilaha illallah huwa la ilaha illallah huwa la ilaha illallah huwa la ilaha illallah huwa if you are doing this you know silent dhikr which which a person does while he, the person is doing uh, you know dhikr individually right if that's the case it is going to be a small piece of air <laughs> which is as big as a single breath and a piece of nail. There will have to exist the centers, switchboards, receivers, and transmitters of all the telephones, telegraphs, radios, and all the boundless and various conversations in the world. And it will, it will have to be able to handle all those boundless tasks together in a single moment. What does this mean? imagine i mean this this <laughs> this should make a lot more sense to us in the 21st century than it did to um ustad nursi students at the time and i am hesitant to say to ustad nursi too because he says there are aspects of what he uh, observed in that uh, journey of imagination and contemplation that he was not able to uh, convey he, he did not feel like he had the permission to to convey uh, them perhaps he saw what we uh, you know ended up using as the the cell phones and all other sorts of wireless means of communication that we are using now i mean it's everywhere now right but even then at that time if you think of it the radio va waves the um telegraphs right telephones the the wireless telegraphs the wireless radios the walkie talkies and then individuals uh, talking to one another and the air the the sound uh, traveling through air but if you think of it all of this is traveling through air the sound the radio waves the the wi-fi today right the uh the telephone signals that we use that are everywhere it is all traveling through air and each and every little let's say uh, you know cubic centimeter cubic inch of air is able to transmit each and every one of those different waves sometimes all at the same time it is mind-boggling if you think of it Im imagine an airport a busy 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 airport where everybody have their cell phones in their hands or at their ears and talking to people right that's what people do or uh, everybody using their cell phones nowadays of course to browse the internet imagine how much how much data is flowing through those little pieces of air through each little piece of air because when those signals travel they they travel in uh, you know circles or rather spheres they they go to everywhere they go they move in, in every direction in most cases they move in every direction if there are let's say 2000 cell phones working at the same time in one airport terminal imagine how two thousand different signals are traveling through each small section of the air and at the same time that air that that little uh, mass of air is doing so many other things like conveying the, the the actual conversations two people could be sitting next to each other and talking to one another or there could be an announcement going on or they are conveying uh the, the smell from the restaurant that is at the end of the terminal right or they can be conveying um, heat right the warmth and the, the cold all sorts of things happening all at the same time the, the little piece of air the little mass of air doing all of that which is a throne of divine command and will 
in each part of the air of the wind and of the air of the utterance of huwa which is as big as a single breath and a piece of nail there will have to fingernail here rather the the better translation will be fingernail right there will have to exist the centers switchboards receivers and transmitters of all the telephones telegraphs radios and all the boundless and various conversations in the world and it will have to be able to handle all those boundless tasks together in a single moment or each of the parts of the air in that huwa or perhaps each of the particles of each part of the element of air will have to so we, we said in nitrogen carbon oxygen etc i mean these are uh, distinct substances too if they are working together then there has to be whatever that power that capacity that you are assuming to exist in the let's say a cubic centimeter of air well it has to be in actually in each and every particle of that air each nitrogen atom each carbon atom each oxygen atom each whatever water vapor right or you could go even deeper and you know think about the sub sub atomic particles how is that happening or each of the parts of the air in that huwa or perhaps each of the particles of each part of the element of air will have to have as many discrete metaphysical personalities and capacities as all the telephone callers each all the telegraphers and radio speakers when people you know play telephone from ear to ear well you don't assume that the words that you uttered are going to be conveyed to the next person over without the the mediation of the person that is next to you so you then have to assume that whoever is conveying what you said has the ability to understand what you said and repeat it so who is conveying all those waves and sounds etc well it is the air molecules so then then logic entails that you will assume that those air molecules also have the ability to understand grasp what you said even though they may not you, you perhaps you don't have to assume that they understand the meaning but they have to understand the mechanics of it and convey it or each of the parts of the air in that huwa or perhaps each of the particles of each part of the element of air will have to have as many discrete metaphysical personalities and capacities as all the telephone callers each of the telegraphers and radio speakers they will have to know all of their languages and at the same time convey it to other particles for broadcasting because that situation is partly visible in actuality that's what you are seeing and each particular component of air has that capacity each particular component of air has that capacity that is what you are seeing is happening because of our familiarity with the universe that we were born into and that we have been observing to function in the same way again and again since we were born we do not recognize the the, the wonder that continues to function that continues to work in it all the time we have difficulty seeing the wondrousness of this very thing that is happening right now as i speak and the sound waves come out of my mouth and enter into the microphone and then wherever you are whenever you are listening to this that sound coming out of a speaker or perhaps an earbud and moving moving you know various organs in your ear and being transmitted through the nerves it is wonderful and wondrous 
but we lose our sense of wonder we need to gain again gain it again we need to we need to connect to our sense of wonder again so that we understand we recognize we witness we recognize witness and understand the wonder that is that is working all the time in this creation that we live in and then so that we can connect that wonder to the wonder maker to god so that we can see them all as signs of creation that point to the creator it is wondrous now don't let your mind go to uh, know, the, the the science of physics that has that has explanations about the how of this the the, the mechanics of this right there so the air is um, moving at the speed uh, and then there is the, the difference in frequency etc whatever the technicalities are that doesn't say anything that doesn't tell us anything it is the same story that that's going on as when newton when newton came out saying that he discovered what caused the apple to fall i mean if you if you are to 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 believe that uh you know story but you know whether the story is right or not the reality that it is representing is uh accurate right when newton came out and said okay i figured it out it is gravity oh thank you now i have a name for what i was observing but what do i have beyond the name maybe i have a formula that explains to me uh, how i can expect the next apple that's falling to fall too thank you but what is it what is it that that you called gravity in terms of the actual force actual substance dig deeper what will you find there nothing nothing as long as you are a materialist a positivist as long as you refuse to recognize that there is something that is working from outside the box that that you are imprisoned in that you are confined to you need to get outside the box you need to think outside the box if not you will not attain a true understanding of reality you will not attain the knowledge of reality you will not attain the knowledge of your lord because he is the real well haq right he is the real god is the real the real real the, the true real the one who deserves to be called the real without without any hesitation any caveats any reservations whose reality is from himself unlike everything else that is real but the, the reality their realities are from outside of themselves from god right so we need to connect to that sense of wonder this is wondrous regardless of how many mathematical formulas you can throw at me this is wondrous that is what i need that sense of wonder is what i need işte ehli küfrün ve tabiiyun ve maddiyunların mesleklerinde değil bir muhal belki zerreler adedince muhaller ve imtinalar ve müşkilatlar aşikarane görülüyor görünüyor eğer sani yüzül celale verilse hava bütün zerratı ile onun emir ber neferi olur bir tek zerrenin muntazam bir tek vazifesi kadar kolayca hadsiz külli vazifelerini halıkının izniyle ve kuvvetiyle ve halika intisab ve istinad ile ve saniyenin cilve-i kudreti ile bir anda şimşek suretinde ve huve, huve telaffuzu ve havanın temevvücü suhuletinde yapılır. Yani 
kalemi kudretin hadsiz ve harika ve muntazam yazılarına bir sahife olur ve zerreleri, o kalemin uçları ve zerrelerin vazifeleri dahi kalemi kaderin noktaları bulunur. Bir tek zerrenin hareketi derecesinde kolay çalışır. So, not only one, but numerous impossibilities, inconceivable assumptions and problems to the number of the quantity of all particles are being clearly seen in the path that the followers of disbelief, naturalism and materialism have taken. Remember, we are looking at a comparison of the perspective of the Quran and other perspectives that have not been guided by revelation. So in relation to a an observation like this, the air carrying numerous, numerous uh, wavelengths, sounds, um, modes of communication and, you know, smell and temperature, etc., heat, etc., in in relation to an observation like this one can go by what you know they call naturalism nature does this it's, it's just the, the way it is right um perhaps even attributing some sort of agency to these um ill-defined shapeless uh name that we call or they call the nature or somebody can be a materialist and say, let's not even go there. That Even that is too metaphysical. Let's confine everything to, to matter and, and, and see or assume, right? Inconceivably, but assume that everything can be explained by looking at matter only because there is nothing but matter. That will be materialism, right? So this belief is just, you know, I, I, there is no like one would one could would say there is no power beyond us right now these are all illogical um in a way modes of escape modes of escaping from uh, providing a satisfactory explanation and just suspending uh disbelief Right, suspending disbelief and then pretending to believe in something, believing that you know matter does it or this thing called nature does it, etc. Right. So not not only one, but numerous impossibilities, inconceivable assumptions and problems to the number of the quantity of all particles, because you have to assume it for each particle. Right. Each particle is doing this job. If you will assume that there isn't a power beyond that, behind that, that the particle itself has all this capacity, you will have to assume all these numerous impossibilities, inconceivable assumptions and problems to the number of the quantity of particles, right, are being clearly seen in the path, right? So if you go with the path of disbelief, naturalism or materialism, you will have on your path like these impediments, these barriers, these blockades on your path that will be numerous impossibilities, inconceivable assumptions and problems. Simply put, simply put, all these various perspectives give you a false explanation that if you th thought with a clear mind, clear heart, um, unhindered by prejudice, you would find to be false, impossible to believe in, absurd, nonsensical. If this is, what's the alternative? If this is given to the majestic artful maker, the air, together with all of its particles, becomes an obedient soldier of his, of God, an obedient soldier of his, of God. What does a soldier do? In and of its himself, um, you know, let's assume a private soldier, a young lad in his early 20s, maybe late teens, a young lad goes to a village in and of himself. If, if there's no external power that is attributed to this young lad, walks into the village, what does he, what can he have the villagers do for him? If they have mercy on him, they might give him some food, 
they might give him a you know, place to stay perhaps stand the night water they may not harass him possibly right if this the, this young lad goes there as a young lad and says okay i need this i need that can this young lad go to the village and gather all the inhabitants of the village at the village square and tell them okay you are obligated to uh, till this land there is this field over there all of you drop everything else all go to the field take your space and till the land i'm going to tell you when you can stop he cannot do it nobody will listen to him they will beat him up but if this young lad goes there with the uniform as a soldier representing the power of the state and the villagers know the state respect the state and the soldier says okay i am sent by the commander of the army and the, the the ruler of this country and the the order i'm conveying to you is that you all have to drop what you are doing and go to this field and start telling it they'll do it they'll do it or they will uh, face punishment if they don't do it remember they know they recognize the state and that the soldier is representing the state if they don't do it they will that will be an act done in in a state of defiance and there will be consequences for that but if they want to you know keep their comfort and their subject to it or citizenship in the state etc they'll all drop what they are doing and they'll go to the field now can you say that it is this young lad who did who did it no he's just a messenger he's just a conveyor he just conveyed the message he just announced the command of the uh, the the sultan the ruler of the state the sultan and uh, also pronounced uh, reminded uh, them of the sultan's power and will that's it it's not the young lad it is the soldier right so if if this is the the observation that we talked about about what the air the you know say a cubic centimeter of air can do if this observation is given to the majestic artful maker sani yuzul jalal the air together with all of its particles becomes an obedient soldier of his that majestic artful makers with the permission and power of its creator not by its own power it, it has no power what power does a an, a, a an atom of nitrogen have with the permission and power of its creator by entering under the command of under the command of and relying on the creator and thanks to the reflection of the power of its its artful maker its boundless and universal tasks will be done in a moment boundless and universal tasks i mean there is no limit to the number of wavelengths that are passing through the air at least we have not reached that that limit but if you were to think of this in time too as long as, as that atom uh, that nitrogen atom ag exists in the atmosphere it's going to continue to fulfill its functions its boundless and universal tasks will be done in a moment fast as lightning with the ease of the pronunciation of hua and the vibration of the air as easy as a single and well-ordered task that pertains to a single particle that is it becomes a boundless wondrous and well-ordered page for the inscriptions of the pen of power this is also beautiful right that is it the the piece of air or the the molecule in the air or the atom in the molecule it becomes a boundless boundless wondrous how, how boundless the, the, the nitrogen atom is bounded right it's small but put it in time every moment it is fulfilling a function every moment it is fulfilling actually many functions it becomes a boundless wondrous wondrous it is and well-ordered 
it is doing what it is supposed to do in an ordered way, in, in, in a well-ordered and organized way, without confusion, right? If there is confusion, we, we cause confusion. Human beings sometimes cause confusion because of the involvement of our uh, partial human will. But other ways, otherwise, there is no confusion. There is no mixing up. There is no, uh, you know, things don't get out of order out there in, in, the, in the universe. If something happens and that is to the detriment of something else, that too is in order. The wolf eats the uh, the deer, that's population control for the deer herd. If there were too many deer, then there would be, you know, starvation. Right? There is always a wisdom. Always, always a wisdom. There is always a benefit in whatever happens in the creation. That's why we say, you know, reality is beautiful. It becomes a boundless, wondrous and well-ordered page for the inscriptions of the pen of power. Pen of power, right? Qudra, Qudra ilahiya, the divine power. Now, this is a you know uh, famous example that Imam Ghazali gives. He says, uh, if imagine an ant on a you know, sh an, on a page, uh, the ant is observing the tip of a pen inscribe letters. Because it is small and its vision is limited, it can see to a point and cannot see beyond that point, the ant assumes, thinks, that it is the tip of this pen that is writing the, the letters that is inscribing on the paper. It doesn't know that there is a pen behind, behind or beyond the tip. There is a hand holding the pen. There is a person who owns the hand and moving it. Right? That is that is how these things, these happenings that we observe in, univer in the universe are. The piece of air is a page on which the hand of power is inscribing its letters. We see the letter being written. And we think that it is the tip, let's say the, the air, the, the molecules that is doing it. It is just the tip of the pen. It becomes a boundless. And if it is just the tip of a pen, it is just the tip of a pen. And you cannot expect the beauty, the meaning, the, the harmony, the organization, the, uh, the multiplicity and diversity and the simultaneous unity. Many things. All of those. You cannot expect all of those from the tip of the pen. And you see that all of those are in this thing that is being inscribed. It is meaningful. It is beautiful. It is organized. And then you say, okay, I don't see anything else, but there has to be. Right? It becomes a boundless, wondrous, and well-ordered page for the inscriptions of the pen of power. Its particles become the tips of that pen. And the tasks of those particles become the dots of the pen of predestination. Pen of predestination. Pen of predestination. The, the word that is using, using here is qadr. Right? All of these were predestined. All of these were pre-ordained. Uh, there, is, there is a knowledge behind all of this. There is a will and volution behind all of this. They are not happen chance. They are not happening randomly. You could not have so much happening all at the same time with so much harmony and uh, organization and meaning and wisdom if it were all random. No. Those particles become the thoughts. Right, that the tasks of those particles, the tasks that those particles are fulfilling, the transmission of uh, my voice to your ears right now, or the transmission of my voice into the microphone, right, or the transmission of a uh, radio program. Let's let's be optimistic. Uh, the 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 transmission of the recitation of Quran from a radio transmitter that is being received by thousands of radios and therefore being multiplied and recited and echoing all over the world 
the tasks of those particles become the dots of the pen of predestination it functions it does what it is supposed to be doing right it fulfills its job as easy as the movement of a single particle otherwise you cannot expect what it is doing from it just the tip of a pen the tip of the pen does not move without the pen the pen does not move without the hand the hand does not move without the person simple as that that you are not seeing the person does not does not justify thinking that it is just the tip that is moving because that is illogical because you know that the tip in and of itself has no power has no will has no volition has no knowledge has no nothing if so much is coming into existence and becoming observable before our eyes if so much is happening from nothing what that means is that yes this is nothing but there is there is a an endless boundless power behind all of that if you see a little faucet little faucet and you see water flowing out of it and keeps flowing and flowing and flowing and no end it fills a pool then a lake then an ocean and it keeps flowing and flowing and flowing you don't think that it is the faucet that is creating all of this water that is the source of all of this water you know that behind the faucet there is an endless a boundless source of water a reservoir that is that is unlimitedly boundlessly wide and deep you know that behind all these objects and happenings around you in the universe there is an endless power that is your lord see see the subtle and beautiful indication of monotheism that is in that you know fingernail like piece of air um i was hoping that i could finish this piece uh, in this episode and we could then move on to the 14th word but actually we are about halfway there is a lot more beauty uh, in store in this so inshallah we will continue in the next episode and and inshallah we will uh, finish it finish it then subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma allamtana innaka anta al-alim al-hakim wa akhir da'wahum an alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin al-fatiha